Hello, you're watching Colors of Asia. In today's episode, ethnic inspiring clothing is always original and unique. Our heroes are the fine art restorer Aishan Abdubaid, designers Zuhra Inad and Mirahim Aposh. In previous episodes, we repeatedly addressed the themes of national motives, which are present in the clothes of the people living in the countries of our region. And we can talk about it endlessly, because we have so many masters who do not just make clothes. They are in constant search, learning more about the art of their ancestors and restoring beautiful traditions from distant times. Today's first hero lives in Kazakhstan. As a child, she fell in love with the applied arts that women from her village were engaged in. Much later, in Almaty, she mastered the technique of producing tapestries and surprised even the French with her works. And one day she learned about gold sewing, became interested in it, and subsequently it turned into the meaning of her life and made her famous far beyond Kazakhstan. The house of exclusive gold sewing in Almaty is like a museum. And the owner of this house, Aijan Abdubaid, is a special person. She is not just an artist, she is a researcher and a restorer, and probably the only one of her kind in Kazakhstan. Aijan is restoring the forgotten forms of national Kazakh applied art, and thanks to her, the famous technique of gold embroidery, Zirleo, has returned to our country. I've trained over 100 students for this craft, and so far a lot of people don't even know about this technology. In other words, embroidery of a gold thread in Kazakh is called izir. And why do we say izirle? We immediately assume it's gold and metal. It's an ancient technology. I think that when mankind discovered gold and began to use it to decorate, for example, clothes of a golden warrior, in those days, perhaps even before, gold embroidery was considered the most prestigious and expensive. It has been appreciated by Kazakhs in addition to its handicraft and beauty, also something divine. This is the embroidery I started doing in the 1990s. I tried so many ways to get the materials. We looked for it in other countries, but couldn't find it. Then we found it in India. And you know, when I brought this embroidery here, I started studying the technology, its essence, what was it about, and I started studying its history. And it turned out that this art came to India through the Baburites. And Babur, as everyone knows, is a descendant, the great-grandson of Timur. And when we read the epos of Babur Nameh, there is a mention about warriors of Babur, such as Jalairs, Argans and Konrads. And probably for a reason, after centuries, this art returned to Kazakh land through Aijan Abdubaid. Yes, I was the first who started this. And I know this may sound immodest, but I am the only one who studies and works with this craft. Art is the most important thing for me, not commerce and business. Definitely, embroidery of gold thread is not just an elite occupation. Aijan calls it the queen of the applied art. Understanding this kind of art is a whole philosophy. It's a certain level of understanding. It's a path. You know, this is a philosophical path. You master it, and it's very difficult. You are going down this path, and sometimes it's hard. But as a token of gratitude, God gives you another level. When you go into this work, you realize that this is some kind of conversation with God. The works of Aijan Abdubaid can be seen in many famous museums in Kazakhstan. And these are not only copyrighted exhibits. She was the one who was given the honor to restore some sacred things belonging to the once great representatives of the Kazakh nation. And the fact that she was holding the original artifacts in her hands says a lot. 
for example, camisole, which belonged to Han Xia Fatima. Where it was cut, the embroidery was hanging on a thread. Well, it was just hanging, and I started looking for the finest thread. And when I found it, it was invisible by number. Suddenly, I didn't have a suitable needle for this. And I spent three years looking for this tiny needle. There was a lot of countries where I looked for it. And I suddenly realized that I could find it where this embroidery was made originally. I found it in India. And what a surprise it was when the embroidery hanging on the original item, which could have been lost and fallen, did not fit this thinnest needle. Can you imagine? I am amazed at its delicate, fine work. And there was no technology, no equipment, there was no computers, robots, there was no microchips. And that speaks to the highest spiritual level of our ancestors who created something like this. It's a great honor to touch these historical things, and to make copies of them is the best thing. Take a look at this amazing outfits. These are three copies of Bildem Chie that were copied from the museum exhibits. Это вещь, можно сказать, которая идентифицирует казахов. Вот эти предметы называются тэтэ. This is a thing that can be said to identify Kazakhs. These objects are called тэтэ. And the girls who used to wear such headdresses were called тэтэ лэкхэс. That's how they were. Вот. Вот таким, вот таким образом они носились. Now it's a forgotten headgear. Therefore, people often come to us and say, it's like Kokoshnik or a Ukrainian headdress. And I respond that it's necessary to say the opposite, that these nations were wearing something like our tete. А Бильдем Ще, вот смотрите, вот эта прекрасная копия с музейного экспоната, вот... And Бильдем Ще, look, this is when the belt was especially soon white. An inside a pad was made from fluff, camel soft wool, which warmed the lower back and protected the kidneys. These two products themselves are unique from the category not for sale. They are based on the museum exhibits. But what other unique features they have? The forgotten technology of gold sewing and this technique is called embroidery in gold attached. The uniqueness of this composition is that our epic things have always been decorated with this serif foam braid. Our universe consists of four corners of the earth, such concepts as right, left, bottom and top, and despite the symmetry, there is dynamics and movement. And inside a certain starting point, God and I are in me. A system that is always moving in a circle. In this system, we get into this life as a gift, as a prize, as luck. This symbolizes the way of life. Infancy, adolescence, maturity. And knowing ourselves, knowing the world, collecting knowledge, material wealth, we begin to live only when we are in harmony with ourselves. Knowing ourselves, finding peace, we have our own small universe. After learning life wisdom, fulfilling our mission, we return to ourselves. And this pattern means the palm of the Almighty God. This hat is called Murak. Such a headdress is also called Khan Khulpak. This means that it was worn exclusively by Hans and was worn on such a cone shaped hat, which is called Shoshak Burak. 
This hat is an exact copy of the hat of a Belhair Khan. Well, Khan worn this headgear this way. Studying historical costumes and such unique technology as Zirlia, we are developing patterns and models of clothing that young girls could wear in the modern world. This is a modern dress of a girl with a vest. We are still working on it, and it looks quite modern. It's an item that any girl would wear with dignity, and it would be passed down from generation to generation. In addition to various national clothes, in this author's house you can see a lot of other items. For example, luxury panels and decorative pillows embroidered with gold. Bags in the national style amaze with their beauty. Or for example, curtains. Here even the puffins are unusually beautiful. Ajan is proud of her invaluable work related to the cover of the tombstone of Khoja Ahmed Yesawi. The master considers it a great luck for her that she not only touched this thing but was able to study it later and do a tremendous amount of work to restore it. To be sure, the cover itself is already in poor condition, however Aijan managed to completely translate its most complex patterns onto paper. And she hopes that one day there will be people who care enough to give financial support to create an exact replica of this relic measuring 4.5 by 6.5 meters. Вот это вот прекрасный фрагмент э, кайма и угловая часть. This is a beautiful piece. The border and the corner parts of the cover, the carpet on the tombstone of Ahmed Yesawi. We've been looking for this cloth for a long time. It was supposed to overlap and resemble a tissue cloth. Of course, the color did not match the original color, and we painted it at home, reaching one and one the original. Five or perhaps seven years ago I said this art has grown, meaning that it has blossomed like a girl ready to be married. Оно расцвело, как вот как девушка, когда уже надо вот в люди да выводить это самое показывать вот такой. Now I can say that this art has really matured. It's a young art, and nonetheless, it has reached a point of being a grown-up. Возраст и состояние, скажем так. Да, и чему теперь можно уже радоваться? А теперь мы отправимся с вами в Узбекистан. Наверное, не для кого. And now we're going to Uzbekistan. It's probably no secret that modern fashion designers in this country often turn to ancient Uzbek traditions when creating their collections. And these traditions are unique and beautiful without exaggeration. We want to introduce you to a designer whose brand stores are popular not only in Uzbekistan, but also in some European countries. В некоторых европейских странах. The cultural heritage of Uzbekistan fascinates many people, especially tourists. It's rich in its architectural heritage, historical monuments, unique nature, colorful eastern bazaars and national traditions. And, if it's impossible to take with you the famous Bukhara minaret or a piece of Samarkand Registan, then colorful patterns of Suzani and Akkad can constantly remind you of a trip to this country. Ready-made ikat, for example, is more than a decorative fabric. Turned into luxury clothing, it's a work of art. The same can be said of art embroidery of Suzani. Nowadays, the motives of ikat and Suzani can often be found in the collections of fashion designers, on various decorative pillows, bed linen, furniture, and even on stationery. Therefore, we decided to meet with one of the most prestigious and popular fashion designer in Uzbekistan, Zuhra Inat, who is reviving this national Uzbek traditions and thereby encouraging others. It's known that one day she decided to create her own clothing line and instantly conquered the hearts of many trendsetters around the world. Subsequently, 
All of them began to follow closely the latest trends of her brand, which, by the way, translates no other than cow's head. Brand was founded in 2012. The brand was established in 2012, and the first runway show was held in Tashkent. We participated in many fashion weeks in Moscow, Tbilisi, Uzbekistan, London and Kazakhstan. In the collections of Zahra Inat, who has mostly lived in Riga for the past 11 years, world trends are closely intertwined with Uzbek national motives. For example, the coat of modern style from Madras, Al Bahmal, and Susani. On hair accessories with mini tubitakas, sweatshops, and t shirts with hand embroidery in the form of a national decoration. The exclusivity of the brand is also that the fabrics used in the collection are natural, woven and painted manually in full compliance with the ancient Uzbek technology. All this is done in the city of Margilan of the Fergana region, and every embroidery has its own meaning, imbued with the inspiration and the history of Uzbek cities. I draw sketches of fabric, then I talk with the art band master, who discusses with me the details of the sketch. We pick colors together. There can be more than one sketch. Let us remind you that the Arbent masters are representatives of Uzbek silk quality specialists in the creation of fabrics using a certain technique, which means tight cloud. And the canvases that are produced in this way are called abras. And it's important to know that 90% of the fabrics that are represented in Zohra's clothes are invented by herself and belong to her brand. Our first fabric was blue. We called it Sote. Then we have made two more in pink, red and orange colors. We have a lot of them. The history of Uzbek national fabrics has deep roots. Margilan silk fabrics are distinguished by the game of paints and amazing patterns. We have to admit, her lines with love and great taste displayed on the materials by skillful weavers are simply Fascinating. It was no accident that the products of Margulan craftsmen were always highly valued. In our clothes we often use hand embroidery. I think it's our specialty. We entrusted the embroidery to Madina Kasimbaeva. Madina Kasimbaeva is the only embroiderer in Uzbekistan who successfully revives the traditions of the unique Tashkent embroidery school, once famous for its special filigree. Madina's works are presented in the museums in different countries and receive increased public attention. Typically, the process of creating a Suzani embroidery begins with a discussion of the color, positioning and direction of the drawing. Using fabrics and embroidery in our collections, we form an interest in the traditions and art of Uzbekistan. I can safely say that we are one of those who, living in Europe, promote our culture and heritage. During our meeting, we asked Zuhra where she draws her ideas from. And it turned out that she finds her inspiration in walks in the cities of Uzbekistan. Every time she comes to a particular region, she discovers something new for herself. Sometimes she looks at the familiar objects and structures from a different angle. Of course, these are the magnificent blue domes of Samarkand, sunlit squares of Bukhara, the old streets of Hiva, bazaars with national colors that are so difficult to convey, the clothes of the local residents, and much more. And therefore, she successfully manages to revive and preserve folk art, integrate traditional forms and materials into the rhythm of modern life, demonstrating to everyone the special beauty and uniqueness of Suzani and Nikat. In the next story, a correspondent in Bishkek will talk about a man who is making a significant contribution to the revival of Kyrgyz fashion. This designer creates his unique images mainly in men's collections. However, he soon promises to release the first line of women's clothing in his life, thereby expanding the circle of admirers of his talent at least by half. I must say that it's important for this master to convey the philosophical thought of his people and Kyrgyz culture in general, in his work, through images as well as through colors.
Mirahima Posh is a philosopher by profession. It's a specialty that is indicated in his Diploma of Higher Education. But in Kyrgyzstan, he's better known as the fashion designer, the founder of the House of Ethno Fashion, who developed a number of exclusive collections of national clothing to reflect contemporary realities. His work is valued not only in Kyrgyzstan, but also in the countries far and near abroad. When we were just starting, we had an idea, a mission, we wanted to raise the Kyrgyz mode. At the very beginning, there was an idea. It's possible to say a mission. We wanted to revive Kyrgyz fashion itself, ethnic fashion, taking into account modern challenges in the fashion industry. Taking into account the public's opinion, its feedback, I can say we've got this. We have our own style now, which is recognized in Kyrgyzstan and far beyond because we are represented in other countries. We have performed our own style. I think it's very important. Of course, you do not come to this immediately, considering the fact that I have no education in this area. I have a very different education. But what's good is that my profession helped me develop my creativity. I have a philosophical education. It helped me understand myself, my abilities, my creative potential. Ну что хорошо, моя профессия помогла мне развивать творческое, творческий мой потенциал. Love of philosophy, knowledge of the science sufficiently helped Mirahim Aposh in the process of creating his collections of clothes. There is an extricable connection of his two favorite things. Безусловно, в каждой коллекции мы, мы стараемся в, дать такой посыл миру, и посыл основан на определенной философии, философской понятии. Of course, in every collection we try to give such a message to the world. And the message is based on a certain philosophy, a philosophical concept, our culture. We try to convey philosophical ideas through patterns, although we very rarely use them. Философские понятия, философскую мысль нашего народа, нашу культуру, Patterns are mainly graphic. Through images, as well as through colors, we convey the philosophical thought of our people, our culture, because our philosophy is traditionally Kyrgyz philosophy, directly connected with our culture. We know that in traditional society, each subject, in addition to its direct purpose, had its own sacred meaning. This is about clothing and household items. For example, bildemche has practical meaning. Women put it on after giving birth. At the same time, it has a social significance. When we see a woman in bildemche, we can immediately understand that she's married and has children. Also, there is a kalpak, a headdress. When we get our grandparents' headgear, it's not just a hat, it's a sacred object. We try to feel the spirit of ancestors. That's the attitude that makes us, our culture, special. The designer uses exclusively natural fabrics, cotton, linen, and silk. We have mostly natural fabrics, and this is our main principle. Cotton, linen, and silk are used. And, of course, wool. When creating modern Kyrgyz national clothing for the designer, it's important to get a natural color. In ancient times, our ancestors learned to obtain coloring substances from wildlife, that is, from grass, flowers, wood, leaves, fruits, roots, wood, mushrooms. Consequently, the fabrics didn't lose their color after washing, didn't get burned by the sun, were nice to touch and beneficial for health. Допустим, у кыргызов 
Every nation has its own associations in colors. For Kyrgyz, say the national color was always associated with brown. The shades were mainly brown and green, because these are natural colors. Just as our ancestors, we are now trying to live in harmony with nature. All these shades make us feel more like ourselves and live in harmony with ourselves and nature. From the onion we get few shades of beige, from the pomegranate you can take several shades of burgundy. This is worth a lot because it takes a lot of time and effort. We dry the ingredients, boil them for several hours, get the shade we need, then soak the fabric in the solution. It's desirable that the canvas be monotone, beige or white. We still need to fix everything. You can use vinegar, but our craftsmen fix it with salt. When you work with natural colors, they are very easy to combine with something else. I love brown and green myself. They are very versatile, and each color, in addition to its significance, affect the person emotionally. The peculiarity of Mirahim's work is also in accessories. These are various belts made by the traditional folk method. Two-way tape is woven manually for two days. The designer has refined the old technology and now the tape is practical and good addition to any image. Therefore, it's not surprising that in many collections of the master there are necessarily hand-weaving belts. In each collection we use handmade accessories made according to traditional technology and method. I can tell and even show it. Here is the belt from the new collection. Our belts are handmade. This is two-sided tape called Yekajazdu. It's weaved manually. My mom does this. I try to adopt this art from her and pass it on to my children. It's very important. Yes, I understand that we are modern people and we live in a globalized environment. Technology is evolving daily. However, it's very important to preserve your identity through applied art. This is a traditional and ancient technology, but we have refined it and made it practical, wearable now. We added leather. This belt is unisex and it can be worn by both men and women. It takes two days to weave a three-foot belt because the thread is thin. It's not wool threads, the wool is thicker, and these are cotton and silk, so they are so thin that it takes a long time to make it. The threads we use are mainly cotton and linen. This pattern, Eryum, that is a male pattern, means strength and will. And by the way, rhombic form in Kyrgyz culture means a person. I want to switch to hand weaving belts. This is already traditional weaving. It's also hand work. Modern images with ethnic motives in a short time won the hearts not only of locals, but foreigners. According to the designer, the demand for the traditional clothing is growing every day. Mirahim Aposh now mainly sews men's clothes but he's planning to produce a number of women's collections. He is sure that he won't have a shortage of people who want to wear outfits he is making. That's all for today. You have watched Colors of Asia. You can also watch our episodes on the website of Kazakh TV channel. 
and on its official YouTube page. See you next time.